You said this is the most difficult costume you've ever cut. This is designed by Susan Benson. That's right. In Why? my 42 year career, that's the most difficult costume. Why? It was enormous. There was no room in the wardrobe to do it. I had to spread it out on the floor of the lobby of the, of the festival. It was like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. It was basically, I had to basically cut a huge kimono, Japanese kimono of white silk. And then everything is appliqued on there, on the silk. And the paint shop painted little areas onto a piece of silk, which had to be turned into an applique, which meant the, the edges all had to be turned under. And I had to place all of these. There were things we called clouds. There were things we called, there were great floral shapes. This only gives you an impression, but it was, it was up to me to get all these little bits and pieces placed on this great, huge costume. And I had to get down. I did it all on the floor, on my hands and knees, in the lobby, as did my sewers. They had to come along. I pinned things on, and they would have to come along and they sew, because it all had to be sewn by hand. All these things appliqued on to the basic white silk were all done by hand. It was horrendous. How long did it take? I, I don't know. It took an awful long time. A week? Oh, weeks. Weeks? Weeks and weeks, and weeks yeah. I, I didn't time it. I don't know. Because I was doing other things as well, you know. I mean, they'd, they'd go and sew, and then I'd take these piles of bits and flowers and things and, and go up to the, to up to the lobby and I'd pin and pin and pin and pin and pin and then I'd come back down and do something else and they'd, they'd go up. It just, it was horrendous. Frustrating? F frustrating. But one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And at what stage in the frustrating process did you realize how beautiful it was going to end up? As? Well, as soon as the things got, you know, as you, as you saw it coming, you realized it was going to be wonderful, and you just had to go with it. And it was, it was brilliant, a brilliant concept of Susan's. And now, did different cutters difficult. have different personalities, so to speak, in that if four different cutters cut this costume, would it be slightly different? Probably, probably. In that, what that's way? really hard to say, but um, well, the actual shape that I would cut originally to base everything on might have been slightly different for a start. And somebody else might have arranged the, the things differently. That, it's it's hard, to, hard to say that. But I do know when I finished that, and I was so pleased with it because it was wonderful. I said, I never, I should never have said this, but I said, I never want to do this costume again. And I had to do it twice more. <laughs> Ten years later, we repeated the Mikado with a different actor, different singer, and that costume had gone into archives, so we couldn't use it. So I had to do it again. It was easier the second time, of course, because I, I could copy what I'd done before. And then I did it again. Uh, the last year before I retired, Susan uh, did a production of it in uh, Ottawa, the National Arts Centre, and we had yet another. Working from the same sketch? Yeah, it was exactly the same. I just had to copy what I did before. But and the first time around was really something else. So perhaps that is the, the, the watershed between Cutter as craftsperson and Cutter as artist, that there is something artistic in your, in your bones, as it yes. were, that would make you create this costume differently yeah. than yes. that cut or that cut. Yes, that I think cut. it's fair to say that, yes. Can one cut well without an artistic instinct? Um, you can cut, um, but certainly not the best. I think you, you need to be really successful in interpreting a design. You certainly need the artistic um, quality. 
Definitely. Uh, one thing that interests me, when I look at different designers like a Leslie Hurry or a Daphne Dare or a Susan Benson, that the, the texture and qualitative difference uh, is so vast, the, almost the personal animus of the designer. And I look at Desmond Healy's work or Leslie Hurry's work. What was Leslie like? Um, he was a very, very eccentric man and very unusual in his design. Um, he was a fascinating character and had a great deal Talk about hands-on. He really did. He, he made a lot of his fabrics by sitting and drawing on them with felt pens. He, he, you get a, just an ordinary sort of tapestry fabric or something from you buy in the store. And he would sit in the, the uh, design office and draw shapes and lines and squares and squiggles in various colors and felt pens. So he, his fabrics ended up being complete, original little works of art. They were, it, was, it was extraordinary. His whole approach was very different from anybody else's. And he drew on the fabrics before they were cut for the costume? Yes. Well, sometimes, sometimes after. But often he would just have a length of fabric on his table. And he was, it was, um, he knew exactly where he was going, at least I think he did. But there was, well, as I say, it was, it was um, stripes and circles and doodles and, and things in various colors. So it made his fabrics unique. You could, one of the problems on the stage is, is um, you don't want a fabric on there that somebody in the audience can say, oh, look, I bought that. I, I made a dress out of that. You don't want that to happen because that, that doesn't, doesn't work for you. So you have to be careful that you, you. Um, you stay out of Stitsky's, in other words. <laughs> well, we we bought a lot of things from Stitsky's, but um, which I guess is no more, is it? Yeah, no. Um, but uh, to make it as individual as he did was extraordinary. I never encountered anybody else who did that. And sometimes it was a finished garment. He'd say, "Well, now when you finish that, hang it in the hall outside the paint shop." And he'd come along and he'd do things to it then. Also, if you look at the pictures of his costumes, they're, they've, all, they've got shapes and all kinds of things all over them. And uh, extraordinary. Susan Benson, she's been a pillar of design in the past year. Yes, one of the best. Absolutely. What one is it of about Susan's, Susan's work that you find unique? I don't know. It's hard hard to pinpoint. I've always enjoyed working with her so much. Um, she's a great art artist's eye, artistic eye, and um, uh, we've done a great many shows together. Very, very satisfying person to work for. It's it's hard to hard to put into words what. What, um, but she, she's very special. Um, she's a very, uh, she's a very good eye for things, and is very respectful of of um, appreciates other people's skills and talents, and that's that's great. When you feel, you feel as though. She really appreciates what you've done. It's um, she's just one of the the greatest designers around. Is it easier to cut for some designers than others? Yes, I um, I always found it easiest the ones that I um, I knew best because you know I've worked with some of them for for years and you always think oh good I can work with Desmond again. Or, can work with Susan, and um, that's always a plus because you you know you can get on their wavelength right away. I mean, you know what they what they want. Um, I've I've had always had a good relationship with with designers, but um, there's two uh, 
there's the, the tangible parts of any craft in the theater, the craft of speaking, the craft of cutting, the craft of you know, finding the silhouette. And then there's the intangible part of it, the part of it that comes through. It sounds like what you're describing is the intangible part of a relationship with a designer and a cutter yes. that allows you to cut something like the Mikado costume. Yes. And maybe if another head designer had was involved in it, would it come out differently? In that intangible relationship is where some of the magic of creation comes with either a costume or a prop or a text or a performance. And that sounds like what you're describing to me. Yes, and that's absolutely that's absolutely true. It's very hard to put into words some of those those feelings. It is very intangible and it's it's um it's a connection with the designer on a I don't know, on a another level. Um, I say it's very hard to put into words. It's it's a feeling. Mm 